So again, please check your calculators. Make sure you're in degree mode. All right, we are still gonna set up. Here we go, guys. We're gonna set up right triangles. Still need sine, cosine, tangent to fit sides. All right, that's not gonna change. The only thing that's gonna change today is uh, maybe you're gonna have to set up your own diagram and you're gonna see two new, vo two new, vo new vocabulary terms, angle of elevation and angle of depression. Let's talk elevation right now. We're gonna need a couple people here in a second. Can I? Uh, just get one person up here. One person. All right, Meg, come on up for me. You hold the end of this string for me. Thank you. Can I get a second person? Come on up, Emma. All right, you're up next. Hold that right there. Come on up. All right, there you go. Uh, you're going to have to raise and lower this. All right. Okay, let's talk here. Angle of elevation. All right. It is from the, we say ground up or eyesight up. All right. Megan's going to be my person, the building, the tree, whatever we're talking about in the problem. Okay. I believe in the Regents problem we just did, it was a person. Okay. Looking up at the top of the monument. All right. It is always formed by a horizontal line coming from their eyesight and what we call their line of sight right here. So as Meg adjusts her eyesight, now you can go up and down with her, Orion. Everyone see how the angle increases and decreases. All right, but this horizontal line stays the same. This, everyone see this? All right, what's her line of sight acting as in that right triangle? That's my hypotenuse, all right? And then the horizontal line here is just the leg, all right? This right here, Right here, everyone, take a look. That is my angle of elevation, all right? It is formed with the horizontal line and your line of sight. Now, it looks up and down, it, change, it increases and decreases, all right? Everyone see that with the right triangle? Do you see the right triangle formed? Do we see where the angle of elevation should go? All right, it, here's my right angle, not up here. It is ground level, eyesight up right here, okay? Everyone good there, okay? Thank you, guys, appreciate it. So let's take a look at this first one because this first one deals with angle of elevation. You got Scotty here. Eye level is 1.5 meters above the ground, all right? So his eyes, here's what it's telling us, his eyes, one and a half meters above the ground right here. And he is standing 30 meters from the tree. Can we put a 30 somewhere? He is standing 30 meters from the tree. The angle of elevation of the bird at the top of the tree is 36 degrees. Now remember, 36 degrees, angle of elevation, that's from his eyesight up. So we're gonna draw in that horizontal line that we had, Emma holding, and he is looking up at the bird at what angle? 36 degrees. There's his angle of elevation right there, 36 degrees. How far above the ground is the bird? Above the ground. So we're actually looking for ground up here. Ground to our bird. How far is that? Do we see a right triangle I can create? Using the angle of elevation, do we see that right triangle? All right, draw in that right triangle. Am I going to find, using this right triangle, am I going to find that distance from the ground to the bird right now? No, I can find a partial distance, though. I can find this one right here. Ooh, I'm going to need a side, though. If I'm going to use sine, cosine, tangent, I'm going to have to start with a side. And all I gave you was 36 degrees angle of elevation. Anything else in this diagram help you find a side? Al? Yep, that 30 right here is also the 30 of this leg. And now you guys, I'm not gonna call this X, I've already called that one X, so I'll call that Y. 
Now you guys can help me find that distance. So does everyone see how this triangle was created? Angle of elevation, eyesight looking up from the horizontal line. All right, what sides am I given? Now I'm gonna turn this over to you. Uh, 14, opposite adjacent hypotenuse, what's my Y? That's opposite, and how about the 30? That's adjacent. So if you guys need to write out Sokotoa again, for Thursday's quiz, I'm not gonna give it to you, and yes, I'll be covering up the backboard there, so that will not be visible to anybody. All right, so Sokotoa, if I have the opposite and adjacent side, you want me to use which one? 28, which one? Tangent, yep. So tangent, what's my angle measurement here? Uh, 18, angle measurement. Tangent of 36, equal to, make sure we put the numbers in the right ratio, opposite over adjacent. Uh, 10, what do you got? Opposite over adjacent. Okay, I have Y, that's fine, over 30. And hopefully it hasn't been too long on break. We solve these by cross multiplying, put this over one. Cross multiply. Will this be my final answer? I'm gonna to try to drive this home. I ask you that, I don't want you to do what? Round anything yet. Do not round anything, because this is not gonna be our final answer. Just make sure we match there, 21 and change from your calculator. Again, you're not getting this, you're getting an answer that's way off. Check your mode, make sure you're in degree mode. Not our final answer. That's this distance right here. From his eyesight to the bird, that distance. What do I still need to do to find the ground to the bird? 22? Okay, 1.5 plus this number I just got from the calculator. Now you can round when you're ready. Uh, 29, when you're ready. 23.3 meters. Nearest 10th, how far? I didn't give. What do you guys have, nearest 10th on yours? Okay. All right, any issue with that before I go on to the next type of uh, angle? Angle of elevation, looking straight forward, looking up. I don't need any demonstrators for the next one, by the way, but we all good. Okay, next one now. I have angle of elevation, and then I have depression. Now you're looking not up at something, you're looking down. You're on the top of the tree, top of the building, wherever, looking down. But there is, this is a unique, unique angle here because you would think, hey, you would think, oh, well, hey, if this one was elevation, this one right here has got to be depression. And the answer is no, it's not. It is not. Okay, that angle is not, the other angle is not the depression angle. All right, so let's talk about it. From an angle of depression of 40 degrees, all right, let's talk where that is first of all, all right? Looking down. So he's looking down on his friend here. Angle of depression is 40. 40, just like elevation, remember it was from the horizontal looking up. Well, this is also depression from a horizontal line looking down. This right here is your angle of depression. It's actually outside the triangle. So in a second, I'm gonna have you guys try to figure out a way or ways to get it inside. All right, so angle of depression, formed by the horizontal line looking down, all right? It's not the other angle in the side of the triangle. It's formed by the horizontal line looking down. Uh, what else we got? Yep, the rooftop is 16 meters from the ground. And John's eye level is 1.8 meters from the rooftop. So cool. So 1.8 from here to here. It's a little bigger, but. What's the distance between John's friend and the building? Hmm. Everyone know what we're looking for here? There's his friend, there's the building, there's the distance. All right. 
So we see a right triangle. We always assume, we can assume that the building and the ground are always perpendicular here, unless we're talking about the leaning tower of Pisa, but. I can't use the 40. Can't use the 40. It's not, it's gotta be inside for me to use sine cosine tangent. Can you get the 40 inside somehow? There's two different ways we could put the 40 inside. I'll take any way. Any way, get the 40 inside. Because right now it has no use to me unless it's inside the triangle. How can I get the 40 inside the triangle? Emma, one way. Yep. Okay. The adjacent angle right here and the 40 are complementary. They form a right angle because this is a vertical line. That's a horizontal line. Yep. So I could say that that angle is 50. That gets it inside. Uh, there's also another concept that we probably did, I think, in the third unit this year. Connor? Correct. These lines right here, they're two horizontal lines. Make them parallel. What did we call these types of angles in the past? Alternate interior, so those are equal. So two different ways. Two different ways. You can put the 50 or you can put the 40 down here. Can we make a class decision here? 50 or 40? How many 40s do I have? How many 50s? Okay, I guess I'll put the 50 back. No problem. You're still going to get the same answer. You're just going to use a different uh, sine, cosine, or tangent. All right, let's roll. So the X will be my what side? From 50 should be my opposite side. And this leg right here, I don't know how long it is yet. We'll find that out. But this will be my adjacent. So again, just like we did in problem one, we'll use tangent. Tangent of 50, opposite side X. What are we going to put for the adjacent side? Not 16, 17.8. And again, some of you not clear on how we got that. We're taking that 16 plus the eye level, 1.8, because that's where the angle of depression is coming from. It's not coming from his feet. Tenth again, good. And nearest tenth, one more time, thirty. Okay. Anything from you guys? Everyone okay on depression versus elevation here? Because I'm going to let you do the next one in your groups. Depression versus elevation. We all right? Okay. This next one deals with depression. All right. Hurry up. Let's go here. I don't. We don't have all them. Welcome back. Right. I'm just. I'm just gonna start writing them all. Fade. <laughs> Curtains. Cubes. Star. Genie. Slide right. Pinwheels. Okay. 
Okay, ready? Pinwheels of the Promethean Man. And make sure we understand, pinwheels is when they turn around, it's not shatter, when they just break, all right? I don't want anybody saying that was pinwheels. All right, here we go, Promethean Man or pinwheels, ready? Oh, a little flip, I guess, I don't know, what, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and there's really seen that one, so. Okay, go ahead, number three. Again, the depression outside. So draw your horizontal line across from the top of the lighthouse. Once you have the picture, you're good to go. That picture's the toughest. Feel free to talk it over with each other. Make sure the diagram's down before you f figure out sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, let's go over this one. A lot of people finishing up, moving on to the next one. All righty, here we go. 15, got the diagram all set up here. What'd you end up using, sine, cosine, or tangent? What do we end up? Tangent. So we ended up with tangent. Uh, how about the rest of your equation, 13? Tangent of, what'd you use? 70, all right, so we were going with 70. That's what I needed to know, because that's gonna affect what you put next. Tangent of 70 is equal to what? X over, and again, we gotta add the 28, height of the tower and the cliff, 45, so 73. Cross multiply like usual. X is gonna be equal to nearest six. Ooh, what did I ask for here? Because I change the directions every year. Nearest tenth? 200.6 feet, meters, excuse me. 200.6 meters. All right, all good there. I think we're picking up the elevation and depression. Now, this last problem involving a diagram, I don't give you one. All right, you're gonna have to make your own here. All right, shouldn't be a big deal. I'm gonna do this one with you. I don't want you to go off on your own because it might get a little confusing. 
Angle of elevation to an airplane viewed from a control tower. All right, so you got the control tower. Oh, this is about as good as it gets here. Yep, look at that you know, tree, control tower, whatever you got there. Actually, that's just embarrassing. Let's try this. The control tower. Okay. Angle of elevation, so it's looking up towards the plane, up towards the plane. All right, there's the plane. The seven degrees, remember, is formed by a horizontal line and then going up. So here is your seven degrees. Do I need to see a control tower in a plane? No, if you just want to make a darn right triangle and put the seven degrees there, I'm fine. The tower is 200 feet high. All right, so that's 200 feet high. And the altitude of the plane, now altitude, this is why I wanted to do it with you, is directly, so if you're standing below the plane looking directly up at it, that altitude is 5,200. So we're talking, I'll do the right triangle here, but the altitude, get rid of this extra stuff. So when it says the altitude, we're talking ground to the plane, 5,200 feet. Okay, with the altitude, 5,200 feet, ground to the plane. And we're looking for how far away from the control tower, how far away from the control tower is the airplane. Yep. Hold on a second. Okay, good teaching point here. I just remember that. This last problem right here. I specifically came out and said, what is the horizontal distance? That was not said in this last one, was it? It just said plane to control tower, what's the distance? So I'm actually not going to find the horizontal distance. I'm going to find the hypotenuse, okay? Unless it clearly comes out and says, hey, find the horizontal distance. I'm going to find it from the plane to the control tower. Here's the distance. If I wanted the horizontal distance, I'll put the word horizontal in there. And I think I took it out of this one because I was tired of doing tangent all the time. What's another side of this right triangle I can put in? Because I need a side. I got X, but I need an actual length here. What do you got, Meg? Either, um, the first one is the, uh, the Y5000. Yep, so you're subtracting those two to get the leg 5,000, yep. Which uh, sine, cosine, tangent should I use here? One, which one should I use here? Going back to you, Meg. Um, use, uh, sine. I have opposite and I have, yep. So we're gonna do sine of seven equals opposite 5,000 over X. A little bit different, it's just not cross multiplying done. Hopefully you realize that, it's just not cross multiplying done. Just review this real quick. You got sine of seven times X equals 5,000. And then still on both sides, we have to do what here? 14, what do we still have to do on both sides? Yep, and again, I just put that in a fraction template, everybody. 5,000 divided by sine of 7. I'll give some rounding directions for this one. Round your answer to the nearest foot. Nearest foot when you're ready. 8 when you're ready, nearest foot. I did not. I got a little more than that. Slightly more than that. You did 5,000 divided by sine of 7? So you found the horizontal distance then? Correct.
correct. Yes. Unless it, I'll, if I want the horizontal distance, Colin, I'll specifically say in the problem, find the horizontal distance. Okay. So I'll give you a little regroup right now. So 5,000 divided by sine of seven. You got it. There we go. Questions? All right. And then we have uh, a little quadrilateral action. Rhombus, A, B, C, D. Let's get it drawn. How do we label it again? Review, review. How do I label clockwise or counterclockwise? Rhombus, rhombus, rhombus. The measure of the diagonal AC is 80. Got it. So that diagonal is 80. BAC, 42. OK. BAC, 42 degrees. What's the length of BD, the other diagonal? Well, first of all, are they congruent in a rhombus? No, let's stop right there. The answer is not going to be 40, 40 to uh, 80. All right. But we can use some properties. Ready? Hey, hey, ready? Ready? What just happened to AC? What just happened to AC? It got bisected. So I got 40 and 40 now. And I heard some people chiming in too. What do I know about those two diagonals? Perpendicular, that's where I get the right angle from. A plan, please, to find the length of the entire diagonal BD. Anybody see right triangles in this diagram? Yeah, so do I. I'll just take this one. I can find the length of the other leg and do what with it to find BD? Multiply it by two, yep. And then in part B, you're going to find the length of one of the sides, however you want to do that. So I'll let you guys go on your own. I'll write the final answers up here. Make sure they match before you go on to the homework.